Hello everyone, this is Keith here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to set up a Xandronum server on Linux. This covers setting up a sort of vanilla Xandronum server as well as a Brutal Doom server using the software Xandronum. So the first step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go down, you want to go to the official Xandronum website. I will have all these links up here into the description so you can click on them. Uh, so yeah, anyway, when you go to the Xandronum website, it has a big button that says get the latest version. You're going to want to click that and download the latest version for your operating system. Now this tutorial is for Linux, but it should cover Windows users pretty much the same. Uh, you may have to change things a little bit, but you know, the same uh, basic steps apply. So yeah, once you have the uh, latest version of Xandronum downloaded, now Xandronum, when you download it, it comes with both the binaries for the uh, single player game and the multiplayer uh, server hoster as well. So yeah, once you have that downloaded, uh, you're gonna want to go to go into your downloads directory. I am using the terminal here to navigate my file system, but you can also use a graphical file manager such as Nautilus or whatever the hell your distribution uses. You can see here we've downloaded the Xandronum latest version right here. What we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to type make. Or we're going to want to make our own directory because when we unpack this, it's going to put it in all the files into whatever directory we unpack it in. So we're going to go ahead and make a uh, folder. We're going to call it Sandronum2. We're going to call it that. We're going to move the uh, bz2 file into that directory we just made. Then we're going to, of course, change into that directory. And then we're going to use tar-xvf to actually unpack the bz2. And that'll spit out everything into the directory that we unpacked it in. So yeah, now you have xandronum and xandronum-server. Okay, now this is the executable for the actual game itself. This is the executable for running a server. So, the next step is to actually get some wad, uh, dat WAD files, WADs, WADs, whatever you want to call them, and also get any type of mods or anything you want to run uh, on the server. Note that whatever WADs and files you run on the server, your friends will also have to download those and um, download those exact files as well and launch a very similar command. So anyway, yeah, just typing dot slash Xandronum server, you know, it won't run because you need an IWAD, and of course this tell. In course, this is where you would put your uh, WAD, fo WAD uh, files. You want to put them in the same directory as your Xandronum server executable and your Xandronum executable. So if you have Doom.wad, Doom2.wad, put them in here. But if you don't have, uh, you, if you don't own Doom one or doom two and you don't feel like buying them or you don't feel good for pirating or feel like pirating them there is a lovely project called the free doom project which is essentially a clone of doom uh, and it gives you your own free iwads you see here a screenshot this is what the game looks like it's its own textures own maps all original awesome project licensed under the free free bsd three clause license or the bsd three clause excuse me uh, yeah, anyway, so you go ahead and go to downloads. You download Free Doom Phase 1 and 2. And then I'll download a zip file for you. Also, you have Free DM down here. This is for if you don't want to do co This is mainly for single player and co op. This is for if you want to do deathmatch. It has its own deathmatch maps and 2, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, anyway, well, you, you download those. And once those are downloaded, uh, you're going to go ahead and move. It downloads, of course, like I already said, it downloads a zip file so you're going to want to move the zip file into the same directory that the Xandronum executable is in and then you're going to want to unzip the uh, free doom zip file or that's the wrong one that's for the deathmatch I don't think I downloaded it <laughs> let me try it again yeah now now we wait for that to download my bad forgot to download it before recording the video so I'm just sitting here and now it is done S -s excuse me for doing that uh, so then we're gonna go ahead and find this is the what we just downloaded and we're gonna put it in here in our Xandronum directory and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say unzip I forgot how to type we're gonna tell it to unzip the directory we downloaded 
which is the freedom zip file and then we'll, it makes its own little directory wherever we unzip it so we're going to want to say uh, we're going to want to go into the directory and copy all the .wad files into the same place as the Xandronum executable so that way you have the Xandronum server and the WAD files all in the same place and when you get done unpacking it you can delete the uh, direct those extra directories and the zip files we don't need that crap anymore Ooh, excuse me we don't need that crap anymore get that crap out of here so anyway when you're done you should only have the uh, all the files you got from Xandronum and the free doom 1 and 2 WAD so if you just want to run a basic server just to you know sort of test things out you can run dot slash Xandronum dash server and then just select the uh, wad you want to run actually what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do uh, dash i wad and this the dash i wad command uh, or flag for the Xandronum server that essentially is uh, the initial wad this defines what game you are playing. If you want to run uh, your Xandronum server using all the textures and all the stuff from Doom, you would use uh, doom.wad, making sure that the Doom wad is in the same directory as the Xandronum executable. Or if it's Doom 2, you know, doom2.wad, again, making sure that the wad is in the same directory. But because we're going we're gonna to go ahead and use the free Doom wad, then there you go. Go ahead and execute that. So you see here, all I did was dot, dot slash sandronum dash server dash iwad freedom dot wad. And there you go. The server should start. And of course, you can type in all your commands here. I'm going to put entries into the wiki on console commands and, con and configurations and all that. Uh, so go ahead and read up on that. I highly recommend it. It's a bit of a read, but it's totally worth it. So that way, you know, if you're going to be running your own server, you want to know how to administrate it. So anyway, yeah, and if you want to connect to your server, what you want to do is you want to type in dot slash. You're going to want to make sure you're in the same directory. Once again, the uh, Xandronum directory. You're going to want to do dot slash Xandronum. This time, no server. And you actually want to do the same command you used for uh, the dash server. For instance, you see here, just get rid of the dash server part. And also at the very end, add plus connect local host. What this will do is this will the dot uh, the plus connect is of course uh, basically says that when the uh, program starts up, put this into the uh, console of the application. So yeah, that's just an option that's exclusive for Xandronum. So we're gonna go ahead and there you go. Once you run that, see here my little message of the day. Hello, penguins just played. Once you run that, you should be using your Xandronum server. But here's the problem. Okay, so we've got the server set up to work locally. We're running a server, we can connect to it ourselves, but our friends can't connect. Well, that's because we have to port forward and uh, actually add a firewall rule. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and quit out now, and we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and go into the terminal that's running the server, and we're gonna type in quit. This will close down the server nicely for you and clean everything up. Uh, so yeah, we're going to need to actually port forward and um, add firewall rules. So if we go to, uh, there's actually an excellent page on the wiki on how to port forward. I recommend doing this, uh, following this tutorial. I tried to explain it when in my last video, but it didn't really work out well. So I just, you know, doing this one now. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, I'm just going to put this link into the uh, from the wiki into the in my YouTube description. Uh, go here, read this. It's an excellent little tutorial. Uh, and while you're at it, read other stuff in the wiki. I'm also going to be posting console commands, server variables, and DM flags, links to all of these entries in the wiki into the um, description as well, as well as the Xandronum website and Freedom. So okay, yeah, so once you got port forwarding done, you're also going to want to add your firewall rules. Now for me, um, I use uh, UFW. Uh, now this is different for every distribution. See what firewall tool your distribution comes with. Uh, you know, just Google it. Just for instance, if you use OpenSUSE, uh, I know a friend of mine uses that and I forgot what default tool that comes with. Um, but just look up, you know, just look up that tools documentation and see how you uh, on how that works because I am using UFW which I think all Ubuntu derivatives come with um, 
this is the basic syntax for uh, allowing for adding a firewall rule to UFW. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo UFW status first just to make sure that UFW is running. Now once again this is for how to do it with the UFW. Uh, and if you want to add an application through your firewall you have to do sudo UFW allow and then the port number. It's the same port number you port forwarded on your router. So 10666 for me and 10667. And then you're going to want to add status and as you can see they should now be coming up and they should say allow anywhere. Uh, say you're done running the server and you don't want these ports open up because it is kind of you know not really secure to have just ports open uh, when you're not using them you can go ahead and go to uh, you can type in sudo it's the same command as before sudo ufw allow port number but you add delete before they allow and that'll actually delete them and then you're going to want to run status and then they're no longer there now what I recommend doing is every time you allow uh, you add a rule and delete a rule it's a good idea to do sudo ufw reload so that way your firewall reloads there's no issues so yeah once again that is for uncomplicated firewall or ufw if you're using ubuntu you should have a front end to ufw called gufw um, so yeah it's the same sort of thing just allow ten, uh, the port numbers you port forwarded on your router through the firewall excuse me and once you have once you have those and you know and UFW status is reporting that they're allowed then you rerun then you go back into your Xandron directory and never should have left it in the first place really and then you can just do uh, the Xandron server and now your friends should be able to connect to your server you just have to give them your local IP address and they should be able to type that in uh, in fact they should be able to just do plus connect and then type in your local IP address whatever or not your local but your public IP address whatever it is and be able to connect so uh, for instance if your local IP address is just you know I'm just gonna type in a bunch of random numbers something like that you know you could get your local IP address by looking up uh, my IP address on Google it may give you your IPv6 you know if it has colons and it's much very long uh, you may have to look up uh, my IPv4 uh, address uh, to get it but basically yeah you're gonna wanna get your public uh, IPv4 address and give that to whoever is trying to connect to your server your friends of course be very careful with giving out your IP address and just tell them to run you know uh, dot slash Xandronum um, make sure they have the same uh, command line perimeters as your uh, Xandronum server executable with the IWAD. Make sure they have the same, uh, you know, IWAD selected and just have them connect to it. So yeah, there you go. And then you'll have a basic um, Xandronum uh, vanilla server up and running. So what if you want, want to run a Brutal Doom server? and uh, what if you want to add some variables and stuff well it gets a little bit more complicated but not too complicated so if you want to run a brutal doom server you go ahead and go into the do all the steps I mentioned in this video and then uh, you're gonna want to go ahead and go into downloads here and download the hell on earth starter pack complete and then once you unpack it um, you're gonna want to unpack the brutal doom uh, Hell on Earth starter pack and you're gonna want to move all the PK3s and all the wads that come with that into the same directory as your Xandronum and Xandronum server executable once again and then you're gonna want to go uh, do dot slash Xandronum dash server but you're gonna want to add instead of using the freedom one dot wad you're gonna want to do uh, freedom Dot wad. And this is the wad that comes with the Brutal Doom project. Now the Brutal Doom project is also compatible with the Doom 1 or Doom 1 and Doom 2 wads. So you can specify those in, instead as well. But note that whatever wads and whatever files you use here, uh, your friends or whoever wants to connect to your server will also need to have. So yeah, uh, so yeah, you just type in iWAD and you can use the free Doom wad that comes with the Hell on Earth starter pack or you can use the Doom WAD or Doom 2 WAD here. 
and then you're going to want to do dash file and you're going to want to add the brutal doom version 20b pk3 and you want to do dash you basically want to do dash file and then type in the name of every file that comes with the hell on earth starter pack um, so we're gonna do bam and that should be all of them now you don't need to do uh, this hell on earth starter pack also comes with uh, these DLLs you don't need to specify those and the dash file perimeter you don't need to do the manual all you need is the wads and the PK threes to be specified um, excluding the GZ doom PK three you don't need that specified as well you just want to do dash file for every pk3 and all the other wads that are sort of add-ons and aren't actually the game wads themselves uh, so yeah once you have all those specified you just go ahead and enter that command and for your friends to connect once again they will need all the wads uh, you know they'll need the hell on earth starter pack and they'll be, need to be using xandronum so for them to connect they'll need to run xandronum dash i wad use the same dash iwad as the one you specified you'll need to run the same files that you specified in your server in fact to make this a little bit easier we can just go to the this here and just remove this and then and of course at the end of theirs they can put dash plus connect and then type in your IP address and then they should be able to connect and there you go now we're running brutal doom so yeah that's pretty much how you get any modded uh server up and running you know you just make sure that you uh use the iwad that the mod recommends and then for every each mod you do the dash file that's needed to run that mod and then there you go now that you've got your port forwarding done you got your uh you know your firewall rules added your friends can connect to you now and but say you want to run a server and you want the official server client, the master server list, to show your server. Well, I have a shell script here uh, that sets up, it's a very simple shell script that sets up a Xandronum server and, uh, but the basic, the commands uh, you want to run if you want your server to be detected by the master server list is you're all right here so if you see here plus server update master all these you know you have to set enforce master ban list to one master host name type in this address you're going to want to the highlighted ones you're going to want to do those so that your server shows up in the master server list so that way random people can see your server running and join in if you want to do that so yeah anyway this has been keith here on how to set up a brutal do or uh, excuse me a xandronum server both vanilla and with brutal doom um, if you want to configure all your server options, we go ahead and read up the console commands wiki page, or no, excuse me, the server variables wiki page, and the DM flags and the console commands. All this will give you uh, console shortcuts that you know you can then type in to the Xandronum server uh, as part of the Xandronum server executable. I will be putting this shell script, a download to this shell script, in the description so that way you guys can see it. Uh, you will have to mark it as executable, put the shell script in the same directory as this Android executable, and then you just run the shell script and it'll do all the dirty work for you. Uh, and yeah, you can just come in here and you can add options, delete options. Any option that's a terminal command, for instance, uh, or excuse me, any, you, hear, you see here you have DM flags. You can, t normally you'd have to type these in to the uh, console in order to change their variables, but if you want those to change, um, for you, you can just do plus and then type in the actual uh, console shortcut and then the value and then that'll go ahead and do that as soon as the server starts up so that way you don't have to open up the console and type it in all yourself. So anyway, yeah, this has been Keith uh, showing you guys how to set up a Xandronum server. If you like this video, give it a like. If you have any issues, uh, make sure to report them in the comments. I'll see if I can help. Uh, anyway, Keith. Signing out.